you. Um, this is the main area I like to paint on, and if not, I like the back area. They're both flat, and the canvas is awesome. Um, nice and big. A lot of girls want rose patterns on their eye, but their hairline starts like right here. And just doesn't work. So anyway, we're going to start with a Snazaroo sponge. And I'm going to use my Paradise White, which I do not like to use for small intricate details like teardrops and swirls because it just runs out really fast. And so I load up my sponge, again, Snazaroo sponge. And I'm going to create a little design. You can do whatever you want when it's, you know, your painting. I'm just kind of giving you an idea. And it also helps a little bit with the lighting because I don't have great lighting in this place. Um, then I kind of keep working my sponge over it till it starts to dry because we don't want this blending into our roses. And even if they have like a tank top or a crop top, you can put it like right over here. I'm saying crop top, but um, what I mean is like a strapless. You can even do stuff down here. You can do stuff coming down the neck. Um, there's a lot of really cool tutorials out there that show you how to do that. So you can bring this all the way around and make it look like an actual necklace. You can add more white. Okay. And again, I'm doing this on myself. It's not going to look as good as what you guys are going to make. But um, I know a lot of people don't know how to do a one-stroke rose, and it is on YouTube, and there are amazing people out there teaching it. I'm probably going to kill it. But um, what I'm going to use is my 3 fourths uh, flat brush. And I'm using Tag Custom Made, and there's the number. Okay, and I'm going to start with just a regular pink and red rose. And what I love about this cake is I can choose which rose I want to do. Um, and in this case, I'm going to oh, oops, I'm going to um, do both. I'm going to do a pink rose and two little red buds. So I start near my white. Let's see again. I don't know where this is cutting me off at, so hopefully this is high enough. Um, I load up my white through my red and the red the deep red is really like you really want to get that good along with the white the pink will happen because it's in between white and red but the red is what really makes it like um, pop give that that um, look that it is real so you can put your red on top or your white on top I'm gonna do white on top and I'm going to face a little bit this way so I can see what I'm doing we start with the rainbow and then we match it right underneath with a U shape. Okay, now the size of the rose can change based on your flat brush. And um, when you do this, it won't be as blurry as mine. It'll be more defined. Um, I'm going to keep loading up my brush because it's running out already. Um, now we're going to start the side petals. So what you do is you touch your brush flat against where it ends and you're going to bring it around and kind of give it a flick. I'll go back over mine, set it on the other side, curve it and flick it. Okay, and then I'm going to load back up on my brush and I'm just going to get a little bit of water, not too much. And you don't want to go over this so much that you lose the white and it starts to turn like pink. Um, and again, you can go over anything you need to. You can even curve your brush the other way. Um, you'll kind of learn where you need stuff. Okay, now what I usually do is I go back with white or sometimes black to highlight. Um, that way you can see it stand off a little bit better. But for now, that's my rose. I'm going to move a little higher because, again, I don't know where it's filming and not filming. Okay, so this would be a good time where you can add some glitter to it or whatever. Now we're going to move to our purple buds. And I want to clean my brush off real good so it doesn't have any of that pink still on it. And I'm going to load my white through my dark purple. Okay, and this time I'm going to start with my dark color on top so you can see the difference. So I start with the rainbow. Go around the bottom with the U shape to complete it. Curve once and curve twice and fill in any areas you need. Okay, so that's kind of the side one. 
Um, you can go over anything you need. I always try to let mine dry though before I keep going, otherwise it starts to just bleed all into one color. But in this set, uh, situation, I'm going to keep adding to it. Sorry, I tend to <laughs> focus more on what I'm doing. So there's that. That's actually a little bit more open than I'd like. The other one, I'll keep it a little bit more closed so you can see the difference. Uh, loading up my brush again with the purple, white, and dark purple. Okay, and now we're going to do this side, and we do rainbow, U-shape, flick it around, flick it around. And the less you open it, the better, uh, if you want the bud. You can always add a little U, too, of dark purple or whatever, just to make it look like it's got a bottom to it. Um, but in this case, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it as is. And again, coming up so you guys can kind of see that. All right, now while that's drying, you can start adding teardrops, you can start working on a necklace, um, but in this case, I'm just going to work on some leaves, and I'm using tag light green, medium green, and I'll show you the number, okay, and I'm just loading my brush up right in the middle, and I'm going to add some leaves, let me get my handy dandy mirror, and I kind of wiggle and then turn to a point wiggle, turn to a point, and sometimes less is more, so you don't have to do a whole bunch, but um, I'll kind of show you what this looks like. Uh, with necklaces, I like it to be endless, so I don't like to do a stem. Um, I like it just to look like they're kind of floating. And you can add leaves with this. You can also find great brushes that do leaves. Um, yeah, I know it's kind of horrendous. It's because I'm just kind of showing you some ideas here. It uh, doesn't look this bad when I paint on other people. At least I don't think so. They always come back. All right. And lastly, uh, you can add all your little cool teardrops and stuff. Um, again, just for the sake of keeping this going, I'm going to use my Paradise White, which I'm not a big fan of for details, but we're not going crazy here. Um, so I'm going to add some teardrops. And you can also add highlights uh, to your roses, too. Um, and dots are really, really good with roses. It adds kind of that dainty feel to it. And I've been doing a thing where it looks like the girls are wearing kind of like pearls. And um, they kind of just like go in and out of the roses. And then you can always bring something up here. What, whatever you want. I'm just kind of doodling here. Um, but now I'm going to take my really, really fine brush, my number one round, uh, Low Cornell. Low Cornell, by the way, is my favorite of all the brushes that I use. And I'm going to show you what it looks like to add a highlight. So this is forming the rose so that your eye kind of catches it better. And I bring it in. Again, I'm not using my Wolf Brothers White, so it's not going to look as good. They're a little um, chunky and pasty with this one. Um, so you can choose if you want to leave it just with the highlights, if you want to add a little um, white to really make it look more like a rose. And I'm going to do one with black as an outline. So you can kind of see that. And then you can leave these things more pastel. You can um, take your little black and kind of go around um, some of the, the teardrops that we made. I'm 
Okay, like however you guys want to do it. But anyway, that's just a quick um, tutorial on the one stroke rows, or as I call it, the six stroke rows. Um, and you can kind of play with it and figure out what works best for you. And other than that, I hope you guys check back and see all my other tutorials. And that's it. So follow me, please, on Facebook. And, of course, here on Tumblr if you have a blog account. Thanks so much and have a great time.